A United Nations-backed tribunal is all set to deliver the long-awaited verdict in the former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri's assassination. The verdict will be handed down by the Special Tribunal for Lebanon in The Hague. Four Hezbollah members have been tried in absentia for the assassination of the billionaire-turned-politician in a massive 2005 car bombing in Beirut, which also killed 21 others. Hariri was an opposition MP at the time of his killing, and that killing became a major catalyst for change in the country. It sparked the Sadar revolution, which forced Syria to end its decades-long occupation of Lebanon. Meanwhile, Iran-backed Shiite group Hezbollah has once again denied any involvement in the killing of the popular Sunni leader, saying that its members are being made scapegoats. Fingers have also been pointed towards Syria, this as Hariri had been demanding Syrian troop withdrawal from Lebanon. Hariri's son, Saad Hariri, who also served as Lebanon's prime minister, said that the verdict will bring closure to the Lebanese people. The verdict has been overshadowed by the August 4th Beirut blast, is expected to create more divisions in the politically and economically unstable country. And joining us live on the broadcast for more on that is Brent Sandler, one of the last international journalists who have interviewed the former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq al-Hariri. Thanks very much for speaking with us, Brent. This verdict comes at a time where Lebanon is reeling from the aftermath of the port blast that has led to demands for an international inquiry as well as political accountability to be fixed. Do you expect this verdict to further increase the tensions on the ground? Well, Molly, first of all, there was a deployment uh, overnight of large numbers of military units throughout the Lebanese capital. Uh, the country now is under a state of emergency law that's just been extended for another month. So if you take that into account, uh, about two weeks after the nuclear scale explosion that devastated parts of the capital, uh, you can well understand that the tensions here are very high and that the verdict when it comes out of The Hague could well further complicate, if not create, more violent tension between the opposing political groups in this sectarian, divided country. Molly. Tell us more about how Rafiq al-Hariri's transition from a powerful businessman to a politician actually helped change the political landscape of the country and his contribution uh, to uh, the country as its prime minister. Well, Rafiq Hariri was a five times prime minister. He was recognized not long before he was killed by the United Nations, who gave him a scroll of honor for the reconstruction and rehabilitation of Lebanon. And that meant that he'd efforts, they were not always popular. He was not always the most popular politician in Lebanon, far from it. But he drove through uh, reforms, he drove through a reconstruction program that enabled Lebanon to rebrand itself during the 1990s. And when he was in power at the time, spoke to him, asked journalists to speak. Absolutely, that long awaited verdict, as uh, Brent is telling us. Uh, which could possibly further raise tensions on the ground. Of course, that verdict coming at a time when the country is reeling from the aftermath of that port blast that has led to demands for, of course, an international inquiry as well as for political, political accountability to be fixed. Uh, Brent, uh, go ahead with the point that you were making. We've lost you there for a bit. Sure, no problem. Yeah, Hariri really, Rafi Hariri de delivered a very successful package of reforms rejuvenation, rebranding of Lebanon during his time in power, five times the prime minister. But he was also heavily criticized at the same time for uh, heralding in uh, the ability for politicians who still survive today, many of them warlords from the civil war in Lebanon, to be able to corrupt the system. It's very complex here, but Lebanon is now on the verge of an implosion, politically, economically and security-wise. So the result of this most decade-long special tribunal, unique in its own constitution, is another very important milestone as to where Lebanon goes. Will it become a failed state, or can it somehow drag itself from the edge of the abyss? 
the way things are looking now, nothing is looking very positive indeed. Molly. All right, we're going to leave it there for the moment. Brent Sadler, appreciate very much for joining us on the broadcast and helping us uh, better understand the significance.